evening on House and Home, we teach you on how you can make yourself a beautiful pineapple fruit bowl. And if you're someone still searching for a name for your newborn baby, etc., you might not want to miss this as we take a closer look at baby names for the year 2014. We join the lovely Jane over at Brian Bell Home Center and we conclude this evening's show and find out if eating fish is important during pregnancy. A very good evening to you all and welcome to House and Home. Now, do you love your fruits? Any fruit or 100% fruit juice counts as part of the fruit group. Fruits may be fresh, canned, frozen or dried, and may be whole and cut up. Fruits are a good source of vitamins and minerals. A fruit will boost you instantly. It is something which can quench your thirst and satisfy your hunger at the same time. Fruits are guardian angels to all the busy bees out there which have no time to even have their breakfast. Since it's handy, they can be eaten even on the move. Fruits are meant to be nutritious and our sole companion which makes them our best friends. When it comes to the use of fruits, it is never ending. Fruits are consumed as food by millions of people in the form of salads, soup, juices, jams and pickles. As much as we love our fruits, there's not only one way of dressing your table with fruits, nor one way of eating your fruits. There are so many ways of preparing your favorite fruits for yourself to have, or maybe when you're intending to attend a special occasion, you'd want to bring your fruit, fruit dish with you. In our next story, we teach you how to make a pineapple fruit bowl. Before I teach you on how to make your own delicious homemade pineapple fruit bowl, just a little information on what a pineapple really is and what health benefits it offers for you and I. The pineapple, Ananas commosus, is a tropical plant with edible multiple fruit consisting of berries and is the most economical significant plant. Pineapples may be cultivated from a crown cutting of the fruit, possibly flowering in 20 to 24 months and fruiting in the following six months. Pineapple does not ripen significantly post-harvest. Pineapples are consumed fresh, cooked, juiced, and preserved. In addition to consumption, in the Philippines, the pineapple's leaves are used to produce the textile fiber, pina, employed as a component of wallpaper and furnishings, amongst other uses. The word pineapple in English was first recorded in 1398 when it was originally used to describe the reproductive organs of conifer trees, now termed pine cones. The term pine cone for the reproductive organ of conifer trees was first recorded in 1694. When European explorers discovered this tropical fruit in the Americas, they called them pineapples, first so referenced in 1664 due to resemblance to what is now known as the pine cone. The plant is indigenous to South America and is said to originate from the area between southern Brazil and Paraguay. However, little is known about the origin of the domesticated pineapple. The natives of southern Brazil and Paraguay spread the pineapple throughout South America and it eventually reached the Caribbean, Central America and Mexico, where it was cultivated by the Mayas and the Aztecs. Columbus encountered the pineapple in 1493 on the leeward island of Guadeloupe. He called it Pina de Indies, meaning Pine of the Indians, and brought it back with him in Europe. The Spanish introduced it into Philippines and Hawaii in the early 19th century. The fruit is said to have been first introduced in Hawaii when a Spanish ship brought it there in the 1500s. The fruit was cultivated successfully in European hothouses and pineapple pits beginning in 1720. Now you have a fair idea about pineapples and where exactly they came from. Enough of that. Now I teach you on how to make a beautiful homemade delicious pineapple fruit bowl. Enjoy! Good evening viewers, this evening I will teach you on how to make your own homemade pineapple fruit bowl. Now all you have to do, you need a pineapple, a nice pineapple that's cut in half and you need honey and mixed fruits, okay, fruits from your favorite. Well this evening I will use apples, um, oranges and rock melon and grapes. Grapes, very healthy for your body. Also a nice bowl, okay, and uh, two tablespoons. Firstly you need a knife to cut around the perimeter of the pineapple. So in this case, we go, we cut vertical first around the perimeter of the pineapple once again and we go horizontal this time so it makes it easy to scoop out the chunks from the pineapple. 
When you're done with that, viewers, you get a big spoon and you scoop out the chunks from the pineapple out of the pineapple. And when you're done with that, you get a big spoon just to scoop out the chunk from the pineapple. Yes, let's just toss it in another bowl so we can mix it with the big bowl with all the mixed fruits. Alright viewers, you have to nicely remove the chunk from the pineapple so that all the mixed fruits all the mixed fruits can fit here when it's time for dressing the pineapple fruit bowl. When you're done with that, let's just put this away and let's deal with our mixed fruits. So we have pineapple chunks from the pineapple, we have grapes, we have oranges and rock melon, and we have apples. So all you have to do, you use the bowl and you toss in all the fruits, all the mixed fruits in the bowl. So we added rock melon oranges, now we go grapes and the pineapple chunks from the pineapple. Well viewers, from all the hard work taking out chunks from the pineapple, now we're left with 250 grams of honey, 2 tablespoons and the mixed fruits. So you don't have to just leave all the fruits like that, you have to mix them up. So let's mix, mix, mix. Mix all the fruits together so it gives a colouring, okay? Like all the colours in the fruits gives a colouring. It also attracts a lot of people here yeah, that don't like fruits but because of the colours they may want to eat that dish which is the pineapple fruit, fruit bowl. So once you're done with that, now we need some taste in it some sweet taste. There's enough sweet taste but there's also citric taste in it. So let's just get a new tablespoon and add some honey. So we go one tablespoon honey. So we cover the top first with honey and then we mix again. So the sweetness, okay, the taste of the honey is nicely spread among all the other fruits. And we should just add a little bit more of honey. Alright viewers, now we bring the pineapple that all the chunk was already removed mixed with the other fruits and we just add the mixed fruits with the honey in the pineapple fruit bowl. So we add some coloring as well. So we add some grapes and apple, some more apple. You have to uh, fill up the pineapple fruit bowl. So whoever that wants to have a pineapple fruit bowl can be satisfied with all the fruits and its nutrients. So you add, you fill it up right to the tip. And there you go viewers, a nice homemade pineapple fruit bowl just for you and your family to enjoy. All fruits, very nutritious as well, all fruits added onto this pineapple. And yes, viewers, pineapple fruits especially cannot just be served like get an apple, you bite on the apple or you just eat grapes for nothing. You can also produce um, pickles out of fruits, all sorts of fruits. You can also do um, make yourself, um, you know, salads for you and your family. So it's not just one lame way of having your fruits. You can produce anything just to enjoy your fruits, especially a pineapple fruit bowl. And did you know viewers, pineapple can flatten your tummy, prevent stomach detention and help your body burn a few extra calories. Pineapple is a nutrient rich fruit containing vitamin C, copper, fiber and vitamin B6. Pineapples have exceptional juiciness and a vibrant tropical flavor that balances the taste of sweet and tart. They're second only to bananas. Although the season for pineapple runs from March through June, they're available year-round in local markets. Pineapples are a composite of many flowers whose individual fruitless fuse together around a central core. 
Each fruitlet can be identified by an eye, the rough spiny marking on the pineapple surface. Pineapples have a wide cylindrical shape, a scaly green, brown or yellow skin, and a regal crown of spiny blue-green leaves and fibrous yellow flesh. The area closer to the base of the fruit has more sugar content and therefore a sweeter taste and more tender texture. Additionally, pineapple contains one very important enzyme, bromelain, which is found in the stem and within the juice of a pineapple. This enzyme metabolizes protein, contributing to a number of health benefits, including a flatter abdomen. After the break, we check out baby names for the year 2014. For our house and home, stay watching. I know it's such a task finding a name for your baby. Sometimes your best friends may want to name your child or particular people may want to name your child or you ask your best friends to name your child as well. Well, in this next story, we find out baby names for the year 2014. A given name, also known as a personal name, first name, forename or Christian name is a person's full identity. It identifies a specific person and differentiates that person from other members of a group, such as family or clan, with whom that person shares a common surname. The term given name refers to the fact that the name is bestowed upon or given to a child, usually by parents, at or near the time of birth. A child's given name or names are usually chosen by the parents soon after birth. If a name is not assigned at birth, one may be given at a naming ceremony with family and friends in attendance. In most cultures, a child's name at birth is a matter of public record inscribed on a birth certificate or its equivalent. In Western cultures, people normally retain the same given name throughout their lives. However, in some cases, these names may be changed by petitioning a court of law. People may also change their names when immigrating from one country to another with different naming conventions. Most names in English are specifically masculine or feminine. But there are many unisex names as well such as Jordan, Jamie, Jesse, Aaron, Erin, Alex, Ash, Chris, Hilary, Kim, Leslie, Pat, Dana, Sam or Ryan. Many culture groups, past and present, do not know their gender names strongly so that many of all of their names are unisex. On the other hand, in many languages including most Indo-European languages but not English, gender is inherent in the grammar. Choice of names may be through education, ethnicity, religion, class, and political ideology affects parents' choice of names. Popular names tend to be chosen by parents with more education. Politically conservative parents choose common and traditional names, while politically liberal parents choose the names of literary characters or other relatively obscure cultural figures. There are many tools parents can use to choose names, including books, websites and applications. Parents may choose a name because of its meaning. Yo, viewers, hope you liked some of the names mentioned. Um, yes, making it easier for you to name your child or maybe the next. So what is your name, beautiful girl? Otola Sekevena. Do you like your name? Yeah. Who gave you that name? Mommy and Daddy. Oh, sweet. What's your name? Alan Sekevena Kevena. Do you like your name? Yes. So who gave you that name? My mommy and my daddy. Another beautiful girl here. What is your name? Bella Bella. Who gave you that Bella Bella name? My mommy and daddy. Do you like that name? Yeah. Good. Oh, handsome boy at the back. What's your name? <laughs> What's your name? Tyler Boy. Tyler Boy. Who gave you that name? My daddy and mommy. Do you like the name? If you're planning to expand your family, or if you're in the process of it, or if you're like me, just love names, there are a lot of considerations to be made when choosing the perfect name. For me, I don't care much for names that can be shortened. Nicknames aren't my thing. 
Not everyone is me, though some of you may be searching for the perfect name, an equally adorable nickname. There are also benefits of picking a name that has a nickname to go with. Your child has two names to choose from that can change as they get older. Nicknames are cute for younger kids. While some totally stand on their own well into adulthood, having a full name can go by later can be a great safeguard option. Some parents attempt to come up with a cool name by inventing one of their own. They may alter a too ordinary name, vary a spelling or a pronunciation, or cobble together several unrelated syllables. We have heard of a few such invented baby names that may hold some appeal. Speaking of names, here are a couple of very unique baby names for this year 2014, with their meanings. Imara, a female name, which means firm. John Quill, which means English flower, from French for a female. Shamey, a sharp thorn flint. Durand, a male's name meaning variation of Durand. Javon, a male's name meaning gift of God. Sanchia, a female's name meaning sacred. And finally, Meliora, meaning better for a female. Originated from Latin. Unique baby names aren't only the new and the invented. There are also many highly unusual names with deep historic roots. Remember, your name has a meaning to it. Your name even shows your inner personality. Love your name because that is the real you. And hope all you expecting mothers watching this evening jotted down some names so the next time you want to name your child, just take out the list of names and choose a name at your accord. Now, are you tired of the same hairstyle? For the guys, they sometimes don't care about how they look as long as they brush their hair all ready for the day. But for us females, oh no, we can stand in front of the mirror for ages just to choose the right hairstyle for the occasion. And when we are satisfied, that is what matters. Speaking of hairstyles, we check out some cool hairstyles for all you young school-aged girls. See you shortly. Simply having a cool hairstyle can be a very broad description. Curled, straightened, fancy, casual, highlighted, color blocking. The list of possibilities is endless. In this next story, we take a look at some very cool hairstyles. Hopefully you will get some new ideas on how to keep your mane looking trendy and perhaps even a bit different than what you're normally used to. Cool hairstyles that are always in style. A hairstyle, hairdo or haircut refers to the styling of hair, usually on the human scalp. The fashioning of hair can be considered an aspect of personal grooming, fashion, and cosmetics, although practical, cultural, and popular consideration also influence some hairstyles. The oldest known depiction of hair braiding dates back about 30 years ago. In the 16th century, women began to wear their hair in extremely ornate styles. During the First World War, women around the world started to shift to shorter hairstyles that were easier to manage. In the early 1950s, women's hair was generally curled and worn in a variety of styles and lengths. In the early 1960s, many women began to wear their hair in short modern cuts, such as the pixie cut, while in the 1970s, hair tended to be longer and looser. Since the 1970s, women have worn their hair in a wide variety of fairly natural styles. In the 1980s, women pulled back their hair with scrunchies, stretchy ponytail holders made from cloth over fabric bands. Women also often wear glittery ornaments today, as well as claw-style barrettes used to secure ponytails and other upswept or partially upswept hairstyles. Today, women and men can choose from a broad range of hairstyles, but they are still expected to wear their hair in ways that confirm to gender norms. In much of the world, men with long hair and women whose hair doesn't appear carefully groomed may face various forms of discrimination, including harassment, social shaming, or workplace discrimination. In relation to hairstyling and everything about hair, here are three perfect hairstyles for girls. 
A lot of parents tell me that when it comes to styling their daughter's hair, they feel hopeless. Like any other skill, working with hair just takes a little practice. It's best to start with simple looks and work your way up to more intricate braids and updos. If you can tie a knot or make a ponytail, you can follow these guys and create some super adorable looks. Kids' hair is particularly difficult to work with because it tends to be fine and fly away with plenty of tangles. It's important to use a great conditioner or detangling spray and apply a little pomade to make it easier to work with. Alternately, it's much easier to work with hair that is slightly damp, so try these styles after they've showered or lightly mist strands with a spray bottle filled with water. You'll also need some small hair elastics, a few bobby pins and a brush. So gather your supplies and let's get started. Look 1. Box braid. This pretty pigtail is similar to a braid, but the strands are adjacent, forming an upside down heart shape. No braiding skills are required. The entire style is created by tying ponytails. 1. Create a ponytail. Add a little pomade or styling wax. 2. Divide the ponytail horizontally into two even sections. 3. Secure a second band about 2 inches down from the head on the top section only. 4. Separate the hair vertically between the two bands and pull the bottom section through. Now the bottom section is on the top. Repeat to the ends and tie off with a final band. Look 2. Knotted back bangs. Little girls always seem to have their hair falling in their face. Use this technique to pin the front back into a really pretty and unique way. 1. Section away the front above the forehead and apply pomade or styling wax. 2. Divide into two equal sections. 3. Tie a knot by crossing the strands and folding one under, just as you would tie a knot with string. Cross and fold across to create a second knot and repeat to the desired length. Tie off with a small hairband and pin to the side with bobby pins. Hide the pins with a pretty hair bow. And look 3. Half up bow. 1. Grab two small sections from the front sides near the temples. Run pomade or styling wax over each. 2. Cross and fold to tie, just as you would tie a shoe. 3. Continue as though you are tying shoelaces to create the bow and pin in place with bobby pins. Weave bobby pins up and down, crossing two pins behind the bow to secure. Hope you saw a few hairstyles you favoured, so the next day you may want to have a different look. After the break, we join Jane over at Brian Bell, showcasing on the Star Audio Speakers. See you soon. Good evening viewers and welcome to another episode of House and Home with Brian Bell. I'm your host Jane Tokevala. If you're going to be sharing music with people on the go, you'd prefer something that sounds better. Wired speakers are becoming harder to find. Basically, wireless is your only option. Basically, wireless is the popular option. Unlike other wireless standards, Bluetooth is the most convenient option people use. Tonight I will feature Star Audio speakers. These new speakers support wireless music transmission and remote control functions. So why not enjoy high quality music without a cable? Our first product, the Star Audio Home Theater System, is designed specifically for entertainment, for enjoying movies, sports, TV and video games. This product will make your surround sound experience even more engaging and allows for great music. It's also perfect for those unplanned parties at home. It features a LED display screen which displays the mode the product is in. Modes which where user can input preferred model choice of FM, Bluetooth, USB or SD mode. AUX input is the audio channel in which other electronic devices, for example, you can connect to your phone, laptop, etc. USB or SD mode which enables you to play off from your memory cards, flash drives and external devices. Bluetooth mode which enables you to connect wirelessly to other devices like your mobile phone. This feature is so convenient where it allows you to control your sound system from your mobile phone. 
Our second product, the Star Audio Multimedia Speaker, comes with a USB, SD, Bluetooth, FM, and remote. This product is perfect for indoors and can be operated with a remote. If you're using Bluetooth, all you gotta do is pair it with another device and enjoy your favorite music. It also features a bass enhancer for user to control bass sound at convenience. The next product is suitable for everybody. It's compatible to DVD players, MP3, MP4, USB, SD, and Bluetooth functions. When connecting to your mobile phone, music will be paused when it has detected an incoming call and will automatically place again after call ends. It features an inbuilt equalizer control panel to boost sound and you also have an option if you're not going wireless to use the single line input. Our next product, the Bluetooth Super Speaker, supports wireless music transmission. Most students and kids would love this where they can carry around in their bag and enjoy music at the same time. It features an inbuilt super bass system and power bank where it's economical and prolongs battery life of this device. As pairing this Bluetooth speaker, simply search for Brian Bell 50, connect and play your music. Another added benefit is that when connected to your mobile phone, you can answer calls even without interfering with functions of your phone. Next product, the portable Bluetooth speaker has similar features as previous products. However, it can be used as a hand-free Bluetooth speaker phone. This speaker offers you the possibility to use a Bluetooth to a range of approximately 10 meters apart depending on the surroundings. For example, you can send music files from the comfort of your home to your friend next door. Also features a sticky-like mini stand at base of speaker to firmly support when placed on tabletops. Our final product is this cute little speaker. Big things do really come in small packages. You will be amazed at how dynamic the sound system is. It features Bluetooth, microphone, micro SD card slot and Oxygen audio source. It is compatible to smartphones, PC, tablet, and MP3 4 player. This product, when paired with a phone, can be used to answer calls simply by speaking through the microphone. Now, these devices are perfect gift ideas, so parents, why not store educational and motivational audios in these devices and present to your kids? So, before I wrap up, I've got some exciting news for you. Brian Bell's family Christmas giveaway promotions have started yesterday on the 13th of this month and will run till the 27th of December. There are a total of 70 prizes of Star Vision LED televisions to be given away weekly, while the major prize worth 25,000 Kina family package will be drawn on the 10th of January next year. So for every 50 Kina you spend, you will be given an entry form to fill and place in an entry box provided at any of our Brian Bell home centers. So now you know you can tend to us simply because you are backed up by Brian Bell's warranty, service and spare parts. So remember, great products, great prices, that's Brian Bell. Until next time, I'm Jane Takilala, have a good night. Best price, best quality, guaranteed at Brian Bell. Right on, right on, Mr. B. Wow, that was booming. The stylish star audio speakers, especially for entertainment, enjoying movies, sports, TV and video games. So viewers, the next time you want to shop for the awesome Star Audio speakers, just because your speakers are worn out and you need to replace them, why not you purchase the Star Audio speakers for you and your family to enjoy? And don't forget, think Brian Bell. Thank you, Jane, for that. We look forward to next week's Brian Bell segment and see what sort of products you have to offer. Run house and home after these short messages. fish fish everyone's favorite protein but have you ever wondered what the benefits it has for you and I well in this story we feature closely on the importance of eating fish especially during pregnancy is eating fish good for you fish is generally a healthy protein choice lower in saturated fat total fat and calories than a comparable portion of meat or poultry some fish particularly fatty Cold water fish such as salmon, mackerel and herring are high in omega-3 fatty acids, a type of fat that helps make our blood less, likely to form clots that may cause heart attacks. Sardines and lake trout are other good sources of omega-3 fatty acids, 
especially for those at risk of heart disease, and the benefit of eating fish that's rich in omega-3 fatty acids outweighs potential risks. Due to industrial pollution, there are some risks for a buildup of contaminants in our body. The primary contaminant is mercury. Excess mercury accumulates in waterways and shows up in fish as the highly toxic mercury. If you eat fish that contains mercury, the toxin can accumulate and remain in your body for up to a year. Fish may also contain other contaminants due to pollution. For most people, the amount of mercury ingested from fish is not a health concern. However, even small amounts of mercury may be harmful to developing babies and young children. Is it safe to eat seafood during pregnancy? Most fish are safe to eat in pregnancy, provided that you cook them properly. Fresh, raw seafood is potentially risky because it can contain parasites such as tapeworms. Tapeworms can make you ill and sap your body of the nutrients that you and your baby need. Sushi sold in supermarkets is usually fine to eat. Even though it often contains raw fish, it will have been frozen beforehand which kills the tapeworm parasites. Raw fish that has been smoked, such as salmon and mackerel, is also considered safe for you to eat. Smoking the fish kills any parasites or bacteria. However, if smoked salmon hasn't been completely cured or frozen before you eat it, bacteria may remain. Make sure that any smoked salmon or fish you eat is from a trusted source, such as supermarket, and always ask if you're unsure. Fish that has been salted or pickled is safe to eat. Oily fish is good for you, so it's still important to include it in your meals. It contains omega-3 fatty acids and other vitamins and nutrients which are good for you and your developing baby. There are plenty of oily fish to choose from, such as salmon, trout, mackerel, kippers, eel, white bait, and fresh tuna. And we catch up with some very lovely people speaking on why they think fish and eating fish during meal time is very important, especially during pregnancy. Fish love, like fish blow salt water and, and got plenty of nutrients to help him body blow me flour. Or some plenty of iron to help him body blow me flour. When eating fish, I think uh, I had a knee ache, sort of like some sort of backache, severe headache. When I started eat, eating fish, all those things just finished, vanished yes. totally. And the other thing about fish, when I eat fish, I wake up very early in the morning. That's the difference. But if I eat chicken, I tell you, I can sleep and snow like pig and the chicken, you know. I can also, you know, keep on sleeping. That's the very big difference. And uh, the good thing about fish is if you cook at least three or four fish, you can still drink the soup. You can, you know, you can give the meat to the children and you can, you as a mother or grandfather, mother, whoever it is, you can take the soup, which is best. Yes. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, may I please explain further, like during your pregnancy days, like fish, how has fish helped you in your pregnancy? Oh yes, right. Okay. On for my uh, experience of my first daughter, because I was always on uh, chicken stuff, I mean store stuff, and I saw a lot of difference. But when I switch over to fish, let's say my third child, she's a great eater. And right today, you know, she's a vegetarian. If you are talking about chicken, she will push the chicken away. But if, if I buy fish, she will always go for fish. And one good thing that I've found out, she's brilliant up here. She's a brilliant child that I've learned. Yes. Thank you. Lastly, um, how do you prepare your fish? Okay, I normally smoke it over the fire or either cook it, fry it, you know, a motherly way. And probably these days, I think roasting is better. And uh, like cooking, if, we, if I want to, let's say uh, mothers, you know, like two months and a month old and so, you know, they want to have something tasty. Or after birth, they want to have because of breastfeeding their mothers, uh, baby, take a lot of soup for your breast, you know, breastfeeding the baby. That's the main um, uh, thing that I found out about fish and which is very good. So women who are pregnant or trying to conceive Nursing mothers and children age 5 and younger should avoid fish with the highest mercury levels like tilefish, swordfish, keen mackerel and shark. 
They should limit fish intake to no more than 12 ounces a week of fish and shellfish that contains low levels of mercury. These choices include shrimp, salmon, canned like tuna, and catfish. Bear in mind that you will have to limit how much tuna you eat to four medium-sized cans or two steaks per week. Tuna contains mercury, which won't harm you, but too much can harm your baby's developing nervous system. If you're pregnant, you might feel like you need to become a nutrition expert overnight. After all, what you eat and drink and what you avoid influences your baby's development. Some choices are logical, such as eating plenty of fruits and vegetables and eliminating alcohol from your diet. Seafood can be a great source of protein, iron and zinc and crucial nutrients for your baby's growth and development. In addition, the omega-3 fatty acids in many fish can promote your baby's brain development. But some types of seafood, particularly large fish such as shark, swordfish, keen mackerel and tiled fish can contain high levels of mercury. Although the mercury in seafood is not concern for most adults, special precautions apply if you're pregnant or planning to become pregnant. If you regularly eat fish high in mercury, the substance can accumulate in your bloodstream over time. In turn, too much mercury in your bloodstream could damage your baby's development in brain and the nervous system. Monhaus and Home, so stay watching. Next week on House and Home, Andy B joins us talking on finances. We visit the Parliament House and showcase some of the spectacular orchids grown by some of our very own orchid growers. Jane joins us over at Brian Bell Home Centre and we teach you on how to create your very own nutritious hair conditioner and many more. Well folks, that is all for tonight's episode on House and Home. This is where the team and I will leave you. But before I say goodnight, just a reminder viewers, to keep the body in good health is a duty. Otherwise, we shall not be able to keep our mind strong and clear. Take care of your body. It's the only place you have to leave. He's wishing you a very pleasant evening and may the remainder of the week ahead be a productive and a satisfying one. And don't forget, keep on the journey to a healthier you with those regular exercises, enjoying the outdoors and keep getting right. Good night.